Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be a recap of our Royals finally ending their losing skid, winning for the first time since against the Norfolk Admirals, the last home game on a Sunday. And they get the win over the top in the division. Newfoundland Growlers, a 3 to 1, and are able to have a great game by Cressy, who has two goals and an assist. Clearly, the first star of the game in tonight's tilt. And then also, when needed in the second period, Pat Nagel stepped up big. Thank you so much to the people that have already subscribed already. And please continue to subscribe to continue to show the support. I really appreciate you all. But let's get right into this. The Reading Royals really established themselves early in this game, like I talked about in my first period recap. I'll share that at the end here if anyone wants to check out my first period thoughts at the end. Just on the first period, our PK coming in was a little bit above uh, 76%. And then 83 and some change against the Growlers. Of course, the Reading Royals manned up, played very well against the um, Newfoundland Growlers on the PK tonight. And the only goal that the Growlers were able to score came at even strength by Marcus Power, assisted by Matteo Pietroniero and Trent Bork. So they were only able to, of course, get the one goal by Power there as the Royals were able to get very nice goals by Cressy, and then scored one, of course, was when Strong was able to get it to him, and another was they get one of their own from Cressy as he scored on a rebound in front on a nice shot from Cormier in that first period with Dominic Cormier, as I said in the first period, Video does a very good job of getting the shots on net. He did a good job there, and Cressy was able to pot it in. He then, of course, scored it later when it looked like Cam Strong might have got the goal, was first talked about, um, by Dylan, like maybe it was his goal, but then it ended up did go in on, off of Cressy. So he has, of course, two goals then, and then also has the assist on Grant Cooper's goal when he was able to chip it out into the slot. Coop is able to jump on it and shoot it and score. That was a great decision there. That line's been playing really well. That line's been dealing with some tough puck luck, especially Jackson's been dealing with some tough puck luck, particularly in that Norfolk game, but also a little bit against TR and a little bit against Newfoundland in the first game, is able to really pounce and have a great game, and I think this is really going to get Cressy going in tenfold and playing like a bat out of hell for the foreseeable here because he's been playing great overall. It's just he's kind of had that off puck luck that hasn't got him the finish. He's kind of had the everything but the finish type play of late when he's had his opportunities. And then whenever <clears throat> they needed him in the first, Nagel was there. But the only time in this game – that the Royals really had to rely on Pat Nagel. They was really that second period when they got out shot fourteen to five. The Newfoundland Growlers, particularly in the second part of that second period, um, were really pushing the pace well. Where Cooper scored three fifty four in in the second half of that second, they were pushing the pace well. They were playing really well. They were getting chances on Pat. But Pap stepped up big when they got chances on him. And then for the most part, after they got a couple of those chances, the Royals did keep them out to the outside. Got shots on Nagel that he was able to see clearly and make the save and adjust to because he didn't have any screens in front or anything like that. So they did a very solid job. They did survive some moments of the second, but it wasn't anything like we've seen seconds in the past where it seems like it all just falls down, to quote um, a Kanye song. It all kind of just falls down, and um, that's how it is. That wasn't the second period this period, they were able to establish themselves, they were able to survive, and they were able to get, um, to survive the aggressive play in the second half of the Growers, and then missed shots and Nagel were kind of the difference there, because the Growers did miss a couple shots, they did have more chances, but the Royals survived, but they also survived because they kept them the outside wall, and Pat Nagel's one of the best, obviously, of all time in the league, so he stepped up for them in the second, but also, after a couple minutes of them supplying pressure, they started still supplying pressure to the Growers, but they kept them outside better, and let them just get shots on Nagel he could easily see. Um, Petra Nero... Um, had a deflection that hit the post, and then Marcus Power was able to pot the rebound. That's the power goal that made it 2-1. to one. And then Strong, of course, shot one that ended up <coughs> going off of Cressy for the goal, where <coughs> Roth was able to get his first point uh, with the Royals as well. That is really good to see him be able to get on the board as well. Um, obviously, you want to see new guys come in and have success early, where Ryan Roth was able to do that with potting the goal, or not the goal, with potting an assist this evening on the Cressy goal. And then the Royals really did close out well in this game. It was The second was where there was a little bit of bugaboos, but they survived. They kept him the outside enough, and Nagel was a beast. 
in the third period, they really did close out well. Um, the shots in the third period of tonight's game, as we're pouring it up now, was 12 to 10 Royals. But the Royals really, again, just like the first period, defended the grounds well, kept them to the outside. Any shots they got that were high octane, Nagel made the saves, but it wasn't much because they really kept them to just getting shots on net that Pat was able to really see well and be able to take a very nice um, gander at to be able to see into his glove or see into his blocker to block a side. And that is exactly what happened in this game. As only because of the second, Newfoundland had the out shots 31 to 26. But I thought for most of this game, our Reading Royals outplayed the Newfoundland Growlers throughout both the first and third period, had a great start, had a great finish, had a great start to the second period, and then not as good of a second half for the second period, but they survived, they figured it out, they figured it out defensively, and Pat Nagel stepped up what needed, and our Royals then had a hell of a closeout in the third period, of course adding an insurance goal on the Cressy one that was then assisted by Ryan Roth as well to get his first point with the um, Reading Royals. So I hope you all enjoyed this video that was recapping the game against the Newfoundland Growlers. The Royals finally, for the first time against those Norfolk Admirals at home, were able to get a win. They're back in the win column. It's been a while since Dylan's on the broadcast that people could say that. They're back in the win column, baby. And now they're heading on to play the Newfoundland Growlers again tomorrow at 5.30 to try to make it two in a row. Like I said in my preview to the week, if you can get two against these Growlers, you'll be in a much better spot in the standings and obviously in a much better spot ahead of TR, who you passed again to go back into second in the division. So everybody have a great and pleasant day. This has been the Sports Fat News review of the 3-1 to win over the Newfoundland Growlers. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe, and as always, please continue to subscribe if you enjoy the content, and a special thanks to the ones that have already subbed. Enjoy the rest of the great ECHL season.